Hello, all my great Aries friends. I hope you're doing beautifully. Um, and I've got your astrological forecast for October. But first, ah, I'm so excited. My book is finally out. It's on Amazon. My latest book is called Secrets from the Womb. It goes beyond astrology. Um, and it deals with the hidden pact that runs your life, runs our lives. Uh, <clears throat> uh, this is my latest, and I'm so excited about it. Um, if you are tired of standing back, looking at your life, and seeing how it's just um, a repeat performance, um, it, it's just that simple. Um, same stuff, different day, different characters in your story, but same story. And you just had it. You're tired of your story. You're tired of having your buttons punched uh, after you've had a glorious day, perhaps. Um, there, my book will sh is sharing with you so I'm so excited I can hardly talk. Um, the three simple steps I was given that apply to everyone uh, the world over. And I've listed them here. I have testimonials from people um, who are blown away by the instantaneous transformations they are going through, they are experiencing. If you are one of those people who is just, well, you've just had it up to here with the story of your life. This book is for you. It's available on Amazon. Now, I'm also available for private sessions on, on Zoom uh, to help you find the pact. It's really simple. And once again, it people are when they go through it with me they go wow I see so much that I didn't see before in other words um you have the eyes to see and the ears to hear so if you want a private session with me on this just go to maxinetaylor.com okay and so, you know send me an email or something Okay, now let's talk about this month for you. You can see that <clears throat> we've got a lot of action right over here in, in this area of your solar chart. And I'm going to need my glasses if I'm going to make any sense out of this. Okay, well, first of all, Let's talk about the sun. That's the yellow planet, the giver of life. It has been in your seventh house of partnership and interacting with other people. <clears throat> um, and it's going to stay there until the 23rd. And then it moves into the secretive eighth house. The eighth house when, when the sun goes into the eighth house, you want solitude and privacy. You become a psychic detective and you're figuring out what the issues are and how to solve them, what the secrets are and how to solve them as well. The sun is our ego. And so whenever the sun is in your eighth house, there is a transformation of the ego because the eighth house is transformation. It's also other people's money. And so there can be um, a projects that you begin, uh, joint financial projects, super terrific. The sun is in the seventh house being sweet and lovely to everybody on, until the 23rd. And then you go into uh, go away world. I need my solitude and privacy because there are deep issues that you can investigate and get rid of. Transformation, okay. Mars, the red planet. 
wherever Mars is, that's what you fight with and fight for. That is what is number one to you. It's in your seventh house of partnership uh, with the sun and Mercury, of course. I'll get to that in a minute. Um, it's what you fight with and fight for. And so there may be one special person who you really are close with and you may fight with them. Or you may help them take a stand for themselves. There's a, Remember, there is a positive for every negative. And the negative is just the mind. The positive is the spirit. Okay, so uh, Mars, you're going to take a stand for the other person, with the other person, and help them get clarity on what they want. On the 12th, Mars moves into the 8th house. Now, Mars rules Scorpio. It co-rules Scorpio, and it rules Aries as well. And Mars is passion. Mars is what we fight with or fight for. It is um, uh, sex. It's war. And the eighth house also deals with transformation and sex. Um, and so you may find that you are very passionate about everything after the 12th. Okay, and I'm not even speaking on a sexual level. I'm just speaking in general. Mars is anger, and you are going to be given the opportunity to look within at what makes you furious. I would suggest that you take advantage of this golden opportunity. Okay, let's talk about Mercury now. Mercury is what we think about and talk about. It is in your, and it has been in your sixth house of work and health. So you've been thinking about your health. Have you been working out at the gym? That's a perfect way of using mercury, uh, which takes orders. It doesn't do things. It thinks. Um, at work, you have a lot to offer. You have had a great deal to offer. On the fourth, it's going to move into that seventh house and you're going to want to be with that one special person or just one-on-one -on -one with other people in general. This is super. On the 22nd, which is the day before, the sun moves into your eighth house, Mercury moves into the eighth house and anything in the eighth house undergoes a transformation. That's what the eighth house is. Okay. So your passion, your ego, and your ideas, all undergoing a transformation. Uh, all at the same time, it's very powerful and can be very, very exciting. Venus, the pink planet, that's love. And that's money. And that is uh, the um, lesser benefic. Uh, it's art. It's, it's beauty and it's in your fifth house. So you're ready to party. You're ready to enjoy yourself. And you have been ready for that. On the eighth, it moves into your sixth house of health and work and service. And all of a sudden you really got the opportunity to be very happy on the job. I don't know how that would manifest because that's up to your story but there it is and if you've been having health issues venus blesses you and helps heal them now jupiter is the greater benefic and this is money and uh it exp jupiter expands everything it is god's law it is expansion it's truth and it's retrograde and it's been retrograde so it's in your second house of money. And you're saying, I'm waiting on my money. I'm waiting on my money. And so it's going to stay retrograde for a few more months when it goes direct. And I'll let you know when that is. That is when your money arrives. Now we have two eclipses this month. Um, the first one is on the new moon. It's a solar eclipse. It's on October 14th. You're going to feel this about a week ahead. All right. 
Um, in fact, you feel the effects of an eclipse um, at least a week or so ahead. Um, they occur in pairs. They're at their peak three to four months after they occur. Uh, so count on your fingers and toes, three to four months. So this um, new moon eclipse is in your seventh house of partnership. So if there is no one special in your life, this eclipse can send them to you. And sometimes when it rains, it pours. So this can be a very, uh, fat, very wonderful social eclipse. Two weeks later, we have a full moon. And you know, on the full moon, everything pops. The full moon is in five degrees of Taurus, and it is a lunar eclipse. Once again, that will be strongest three to four months after it occurs. It's on the 28th of the month. So we've got two eclipses. October is a big month. Um, and I think with the two eclipses, um, it's kind of a wake up time for a lot of people when we have two eclipses, two, two eclipses. Um, and this is usually how eclipses occur. If there are three of them in a row, of course, there'll be two one month and one either the, the prior month or the following month. Um, and they will last until the next pair of eclipses come along. So, looks very powerful. Till next time, uh, enjoy the eclipses, and may the stars shine brightly on you and yours. Bye for now.